Andrew Scheer was already the walking wounded, but with an open revolt against his leadership, Mr. Scheer has finally surrendered, announcing his resignation. But why now? Was it the story that he'd used Conservative Party money to send his kids to private religious schools? Did the more progressive arm of the party push him out over issues like same-sex marriage? Or was he just the victim of his own inability to meet the high expectations that he set? And now the big challenge. Can a new leader, whomever that will be, unite an increasingly divided base. Let's find out. Joining me now are Alberta Conservative MP Michelle Rempel Garner, Conservative House Leader Candace Bergen, and former Conservative Deputy Leader and CTV Political Analyst Lisa Raitt. Uh, great to have all of you here. Uh, look, I just got to start with both for all three of you. I know Lisa Raitt's commented, but Michelle uh, Rempel Garner, uh, people keep mentioning you as a possible leadership contender now that Mr. Shear is gone. Let's go. Are you considering it? Well, I know that they're mentioning Lisa's name and Candace's name. And I think it says a lot about our party that we have all of these women that are qualified to run. I hope none of us self-deselect and we take time to reflect on what visions are and move forward from there. But um, So you're saying you're considering it. I'm just trying to cut no, through the I political just, like, like, No, look, listen, Evan, we are you know, just a, a few days from right. a major change in our yeah. party. And I mean, I think it's a little early to speculate, but I I, I it think out. it's great that the women on these panels are all contenders and nobody should be self-deselecting at this okay, point. Okay, so, okay, so you're thinking about it. Yeah, uh, I, people I, are talking about you as a potential leadership candidate as well. Is that possible? Well, I think Michelle's exactly right. And I think the fact is people like, like Lisa, Michelle, myself, uh, we've shown leadership not only in the party, like it literally in terms of being at the front bench, but we've shown leadership uh, in a lot of ways and for a lot of years. So um, I'm glad that we're being thought about and considered yeah. and talked about, but it is very, very early to be but even you're not considering ruling, let's just say any that you're of not that. Ruling it out, well, I, I, I feel I'm, I'm already, I'm the House Leader, I feel like I am uh, a leader uh, in the party, and so I think it would be, it, it's way too soon to start really okay. thinking about it seriously. Uh, Lisa, you and I have already had, had, had a, a talk earlier this week. You said you've ruled it out, your yeah. name keeps coming up. Are you reconsidering? I'm out. <laughs> I really appreciate what Candace and Michelle had to say, but uh, it's very different living on the outside of the of the parliamentary precinct than it is living on the inside of the parliamentary precinct. And I have really good clarity on on this go around. And this is not my time, so I'm going to observe from the sidelines, comment frequently, and wish everybody um, really great luck in okay. whatever they're going to be making decisions on. Let's go back into what happened. It was pretty sudden, Michelle Rempel. Um, uh, what finally pushed Mr. Shear over the edge? Was it this story about the par uh, private school? Was he a victim of high expectations he couldn't met meet? Why did he have to resign? You know, he here's the reality. He's resigned. Uh, he gave a speech in the House on that. He laid out his, his explanation for it. And now we move forward, right? I mean, um, picking over that is not going to help us hold the government to account. And where I think the discussion that we all want to have is going to be is in the leadership race. What are the qualities of somebody that we want to lead the party? What are the big ideas that we want to focus on? And, you know, I, I am glad that uh, we have some stability in terms of him staying on as in interim leader. He was the Speaker of the House. And because while we have this leadership going on, we simultaneously have to hold the government to account. And... Um, I think we're in a good place. But after why keep this him week? on as interim leader? Because there are a lot of people didn't want him after the the, the private school story. Oh. Uh, Ron Ambrose did such a great job turning the channel after Stephen Harper. Why keep him on as interim? Well, leader? Well, actually, first of all, he isn't interim leader. He is leader. Okay, so he leader. is re right, he is right. resigning once the party chooses a new but leader. The caucus could so, have put in an interim leader. Uh, I don't. We actually don't believe no. that's the way no. the rule stated it. So the, we we no. believe that the rule stated that he is leader until the party chooses right. a new leader. And we are very, right. very happy with that. Uh, he's uh, done a very good job, not only in question period, but in terms of keeping the party united, uh, mo raising a lot of money for us. And we've got a very short time right now before and as a new leader is chosen. So none of us were interested in some interim leadership race. We wanted Andrew to continue uh, on as leader. Lisa, does the party now, I mean, you didn't win your seat and you and I have spoken saying Andrew Shearer certainly didn't help you do this. Does the party now have to recalibrate on some fundamental issues like uh, social conservative issues, same-sex marriage that many believe really hurt Andrew Shearer in places like Ontario. 
I think what the party's about to go through is a fantastic leadership race where all kinds of different platforms will be put forward and the membership's going to decide what direction they want to go in. I'm looking for different qualities though. I want to look for somebody who's got a great sales opportunity. I want to see somebody who can sell whatever vision we come up with. And I want to see somebody as well who has the ability to deal with accusations that are not factual and make sure that they have a strategy to ensure that these accusations stop. And that's what I'm looking for, those two kinds of communication skills in the next leadership round. Uh, Michelle Rappel, you were outspoken about the oh. fact that, that Andrew Shearer, you thought was offside on same-sex marriage, just wasn't strong enough on that stuff. Does the party have to kind of recalibrate on some fundamental issues? Look, um, our party is already based on the principle that we support the equality of opportunity of all Canadians. For me, I am looking for somebody who um, will champion the rights of everybody in, Can in Canada enthusiastically, and that includes members of the LGBT community. Uh, we are the official opposition. Uh, we have a, 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 a right now, I hope we form government sometime in the future, but we have an obligation to hold the government to the account for failures to that community, and that it requires a leader who is going to, to, to get up on issues like the blood ban or you know, other things that are facing the community right mm -hmm. now. So we have the capacity to do that, and I think our next leader needs to reflect that very strongly. So where does it leave social conservatives then, Candace? I, I think there absolutely is room for social conservatives yeah. in that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think whatever your belief is, and, and I absolutely agree with, uh, with Michelle, I think our party has gone past and supports equal marriage, but we, and we all believe not only in equality of marriage and the, uh, the value of it, but we want Canadians, whether they are in same-sex marriages or heterosexual relationships to be in loving, healthy, strong relationships in a country where their prime minister and their government supports them and protects them and, and to put it frankly, is happy for them and wants them to, uh, yeah. to continue in that. So well, I think you can be a social conservative and believe that and say that. All right, well, that proved yeah. more difficult for Andrew Scheer. What about on climate, Lisa, right? That was the other thing. Two-thirds of Canadians voted for parties that had a price on carbon not just a climate plan. Does your party have to change that? Well, I think our party has to ensure that when they're talking about climate, that they're acknowledging the fact that we do have plans in place that they're going to work, that the reduction of the emissions is the goal of society in general. And how you get to it is going to be something that the party is going to have to communicate and it's going to have to set out. Um, I know that we've got some great expertise within the party who's going to be able to put together a platform that's going to make sense. And I expect, just like it happened in my election in Milton, it's going to turn out to be a debate on climate during the leadership race that's going to be happening in the coming weeks. And people are going to be looking at that. Right. And I think the party does have to think about making sure that they highlight those issues. Okay, real quick, because i got a minute. How soon does all this have to happen? I'm, I'm wondering about the timelines, because, man, it's a minority government. You guys got to get your ducks in order. So how fast does a leadership race have to happen? When does a new leader have to be selected by? Well, I've been, I've been thinking about this actually over the last <laughs> couple of hours. I really hope it happens yeah. very soon. I hope that we have a leader in place by the summer. By the summer. That, that would be my, my wish. I, by the yeah. summer. So there's supposed to I'm be a leadership uh, yeah, you know, there's, convention there's, in April. Is that too soon, Michelle? Uh, the reality is, is we have a governing body, the National Council, right. which will meet to decide the timeline. Uh, I know that they've already been discussing this and uh, have been receiving input from a lot of different people. But um, mm -hmm. I would say, yes, we, we there's urgency. But we also, I, I would, I would say this note of caution. We need to have a big discussion about ideas. I don't want this to be a contest about personality. Like I really want to see, for me personally, this be a discussion about who we are as a party in terms of policy, uh, who's best, who best can uh, sell that, I guess, going forward, and who embodies that. And I just want to make sure that there's enough time. Okay, uh, before I get a press, when are you going to make your decision on that? You two. Oh, Come on. I've got to do January? some Christmas shopping. That's what I, right now, i got to figure out what am, what am well, I buying the new grandbaby. Like, declares declared yeah. probably in the next couple months, though, right? You gotta I'll say this. You're asking us about timeline. We're not working on your timeline, so uh -huh. stay tuned. Yep. Uh -huh. I like it. Gee, that's no, yeah, That's breaking news. <laughs> They're not working on the journalist timeline. You got told. Shocking. All right. Well uh, done, Evan. Well uh, done. Lisa Ray, uh, Candace Bergen, and Michelle Rempelgarner. That's great.